Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, one um, unfortunate note that I have to give off the top is that we only have eight minutes because uh, Brad and the team are heading back to Austin. And so we're gonna, this is gonna be a little bit short, but um, we got extra time with Josh. So um, we'll start again with Mike Craven. And after that, we'll go to Phil West like we did last time. And then uh, let's go to Andy Diosa third. Can we get permission to record? Uh, yes. Uh, is it good? Okay, we're working on that. Give us one second. <clears throat> uh, uh, Brad, from your perspective, what are the challenges when the team kind of gets pinned back there at the end and the shots cut keep coming faster and faster? Yeah, I think in the second half, we took more of a defensive posture, um, whether it was the heat or whether it was Kansas City switching up. Um, first half, they were really attacking our right side. Second half, they really wanted to go at our left side. And uh, we had a little bit of trouble there in the first 10 minutes, so we went a little bit more defensive. Um, just for us, when we were in possession, I think we just needed to keep it longer. Uh, I think we did the defensive work, but then we didn't let ourselves rest like we want to rest when we're on the ball. We want to keep possession. We want to make them work. Um, I think you saw that in the first half that we were able to do a little bit better. Um, but I mean, it was a tremendous effort by the guys. I mean, the heat played a role. And uh, I mean, we walk up, walk away from Kansas City, one of the best offenses with a point. Phil West, if you're ready. All right. Thanks, Brad. Um... Yeah, wanted to ask you about just the things that you maybe learned from the last game. There were kind of a lot of similarities, but obviously um, a very different outcome. And y'all were able to uh, withstand uh, the pressure a little bit better than, than the first time around. Yeah, I mean, it was helpful to keep ring on the field. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit easier to go 11 v 11, but um, I think the energy was better. I think our general cohesiveness as a group has gotten better every game. Um, yeah, and I just think as we continue to go every game, we get better offensively, we get better defensively. And I think you've seen that from every game we continue to play. And uh, Now we're done with this little road stretch. We get to go home and play in front of our fans. So we get to make Q Q2 our, uh, our fortress. So we're excited. Great. So before we throw to Andy, uh, the next one after him will be Chris Tavares. Andy, you're up. Hey, Brad, how's it going? All good, man. Right, I'm just curious to, to know a little bit about uh, the things that uh, quickly will you guys kind of learn from the from the eight game road trip and and what type of challenges that presented for from a day in and day out uh, standpoint. Josh kind of mentioned a little bit about just like the travel and and not obviously being able to be home. Yeah, I mean, for a new team and some guys that are new to this league, it gives them a little bit of a taste of how much travel we actually do and um, what we need to do to get our bodies ready to perform at our like our peak performance. Uh, we have a great performing staff. We have an amazing medical staff and obviously our technical staff is getting us right on the training field. So um, these eight games on the road, we use to uh, kind of figure out our style and implement our style, no matter where we play, whether it's a home or away, we have the style of play that we want to play, but also the energy that we need. I mean, you can see the amount of energy that guys are uh, putting forward every game is amazing. And you can see games like LAFC where we don't put that same energy and the result shows it. So, um, I mean, I think, like I said, we're learning every game. You can see the guys putting in the work and uh, I think we're really excited to get home and have a, have a game where someone has to travel to us for once. Chris. Brad, what's going through your mind during that second half where it is, I mean, there was a sequence right there where I think you had three saves in a row and then you were down for a minute after what's going through your mind when, when you're just having to play out of your mind to, to keep, keep your team in this game during that, that second half. Keep the ball out of the net. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, for me, the guys in front of me do a really good job. I mean, we're probably one of the, highest teams with the most block shots. So, I mean, the guys in front of me are doing extremely well to get their bodies in the way. And I just want to do everything I can to help them. Uh, the way we play, we're going to give up chances because we want to play out of the back and that gets us a little bit stretched. So, I mean, we know we're going to give up chances, but it's my job and the back line's job to limit the amount of great chances they have. And I mean, today I was able to put my body in front of a lot. Um, hopefully I don't have to do that every game. 
but uh, credit to the guys in front of me for, I mean, I think B's had like seven, eight block shots as well. And Julio had a couple, Romagna came in, had a couple, Diego had a couple. So, I mean, it's, it's a collective effort. Um, I'm just the guy that gets the save stat. So. Um, and uh, just one note there, I think everybody may know already, but uh, Brad had a career high of nine saves in that match. Um, we have time for one more question that'll come from Ben Bear. Go ahead, Ben. Hi, Brad. Uh, you've obviously come in and, and your performance, your, your performances speak for themselves so far this season. You're playing great. Have you, you know, surprised yourself at all at how, at how, at how well you've been able to play uh, stepping in for the, into the starting role for the first time? No, I mean, um, I've been working for eight years to get an opportunity like this to go out and get a run of games where I could actually be the starter and play consistently. Um, I've had some really amazing goalkeeper coaches in Pat Onstad and Rob Bartusian who have pushed me at times in my career where I needed different things. And I mean, if you talk to them, they'll tell you that I was just waiting for an opportunity. I mean, sitting behind guys like Zach Steffen and Sean Johnson isn't the worst thing for a goalkeeper to develop. Um, I think the narrative is just becoming if you don't get playing time early on in your career that maybe you'll get overlooked later on. So for me, it's not about proving people wrong or surprising myself. It's just going out every day, training hard and doing what I know I'm capable of. And um, when I'm on the field with my teammates, just doing everything I can to help them win and have fun in the process. I mean, this is a job for us, but at the end of the day, we do it because we love it and we have to trust and believe in ourselves. Great. And again, with apologies for those who didn't get a chance to ask a question of Brad at this time, uh, we will have more opportunities. But Brad, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll see you back here in Austin.